The damages that we are currently imposing on our planet are far beyond what we can perceive right now, far beyond what our politicians are educated to perceive. So we think that in order for us to have better policies, both on or that uh, better balance our interests in having competitive economies and uh, uh, sustainable environment policies, press on the hands of these experts rather than on the hands of politicians. We think that this would work the following way. We think that parliaments should take um, uh, two thirds to elect like these uh, uh, experts by two thirds majorities, ensuring that different uh, perspectives on the issue are represented on this uh, on these matters. We would probably mimic what we have in the Supreme Courts or constitutional courts in continental Europe. These courts would be able to veto policies that have uh, an environmental that impose environmental burden, uh, and they would do uh, not only a yes or no, but the sentencing explaining why that is, and possibly proposing measures that would allow the proposal to go forward. We think that this will allow that this will be uh, particularly important in things such as pipelines going through natural reserves, in the exploration of oil and other natural resources in those reserves, in establishing tracking of clean coal and other technologies that we are uncertain about their uh, their uh, environmental consequences. We don't think that this panel should be all about environment. We think that it should reflect a proportionality. And we think this is incredibly important on this aspect of proposing balancing measures. We think that if we are going to have a K pipeline, for example, in the United States or Canada, I don't remember, we probably could have some policies to counterbalance that that this panel could probably propose, but it would serve as a trustee for our future generations, for our environment, and, uh, and, and for us all. Because this is mimicked after our constitutional court, we think that it's very likely that this will guarantee legitimacy because it's well elected by Parliament in some way, and also independence because these will not be subject to a second mandate. These will probably be very reputable academics that will be, be making technical decisions. We would welcome uh, experts of, on the environment, but also maybe on legal, ethical, legal issues, especially those relating with, fut with uh, future generations and so on. Uh, it will be uh, like a, um, supported by uh, a body of uh, researchers on different areas, namely economical and environmental areas. Why do you think this, is, uh, 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 this will lead to better policies? First of all, we think that these, these, this court will be more independent from special interests. Secondly, we think that specialized decisions are crucial in these matters. And thirdly, we think that these people will serve as better trustees for future generations and for us all. So, going forward, this is everything clear? Okay. So, why do we think this um, is uh, that these are more independent people from special interests? We think that the special interests in, in the environment. Uh, especially in the special interests relating to energy, uh, are especially pernicious because they are allowed to fund, cam fund campaigns, political campaigns, to a very substantive uh, uh, degree. We think that uh, um, the, the, this fact does not, uh, the fact that we have a reinforced majority will make it more likely that these are not controlled by special interests because, uh, the, these, uh, because these, uh, these uh, decisions on the experts will be themselves subject to scrutiny. But if the politicians are the ones making these decisions, we don't have a way of ensuring that these are made by good people, people with good information, as if we compare it with the CVs of people, the media has a, a little access to what kind of people are they proposing. Secondly, uh, in, 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 when politicians decide, we also don't know how they, um, how they stand in some of these more technical issues, when in research you can see how they are going to do it. But also, this, these are more like single issues, um, single issue stuff, um, and so we are allowed to scrutinize these uh, way better. The amount, of, the amount of scrutiny also always like, raise awareness for all of these problems, uh, namely the media, when we think that that is important. Furthermore, we think that um, 
because these uh, these people have, uh, have come mostly, or will probably come mostly from academia, they they see their scientific reputations as, as things that they value uh, very, uh, very much, and we think that we should probably impose the same kinds of protections against libelies, namely income and wealth uh, declarations that we also have in place for these constitutional parties in some places. Why do we think that specialized decisions are so crucial to first? Yes. Yes, sir. But uh, the fact is that the majority of the researchers at the universities are funded by, by private companies. So don't you consider that? That's, that's, that's just not true. We admit that some of these research is founded by these special interest groups, but we also think that most researchers are independently funded or funded by the government funds. So, uh, uh, as is shown by most research, you have seen like all the art or movie where he states that like 99 or 100 percent of researchers in this area believe that global warming exists. So we don't think that is the main issue here. And even if some of these uh, experts are from uh, are influenced by those special groups, we think that in the end they would not be a significant majority in the court. So why these technical decisions are important? Many of these issues are incredibly technical. Things like clean coal, fracking, and uh, treating shell gas out of the earth. Uh, we don't know exactly how they work, and, but these people do. They, these people study it very intensely. But what's the, um, and they have lots of, and these special interest groups are able to fund some of this research, and they are able to directly provide it to through their lobbying companies, through their lobbying efforts to uh, politicians. And this is why politicians often decide against what is this uh, research orthodoxy, what's a uh, research consensus. Because this uh, is a single issue, these people will focus in these specialists. We think that specialization will be will lead to better decisions, namely on the environmental area. Thirdly, why do we think that these people are better trustees of future generations? First of all, we think this is true because politicians have an interest to concede to short-term pressures, and we think these are twofold. First of all, pressures to to do things based on what will uh, get them votes. And the economy, as we all know, is very likely to uh, grant people more votes than long-term uh, things such as the environment. But secondly, they are more likely to receive to pressure on the short term because of special interest groups and their stake in campaign financing. Because these experts only have one mandate. They don't, uh, and there's no like re-election process. They don't need money for campaigns because their reputation is so important for them. And because many of them have dedicated their own, their entire lives to researching about these issues, and because they are so important for them, we think that our collective futures are much better uh, stand, stand much better on these experts than on the hands of politicians. Thank you. My thanks to the Prime Minister for his remarks, and I'll call upon the Leader of the Opposition to open the case on behalf of the Opposition Bench. Here, here. Science does not equal truth and does not equal objective knowledge of things. Secondly, that democracy um, is more than science, that science, that democracy is better suited to making important decisions than scientists. And thirdly, that the Supreme Court they are proposing here is not a court in the traditional sense and should not be compared. So, firstly, why does science not equal truth? This was basically what the majority of the proposition's um, argumentation was based on. The thing is that scientists are better suited than politicians to make the right decisions when environmental processes are concerned. However, in science we have a lot of processes um, that are not leading to truthful, to objective decisions, but to very subjective decisions. Like in science, we also have kind of infights. We have people being invested in their theories. And this is especially true in environmental cases. 
because the environment is extremely complicated and we do not have a clear scientific grasp of what's really going on. Most people agree that there is climate change, but some people say there is not. And these people are legitimate, uh, legitimate scientists as well. Sir. The environmental models that we need in order to um, model things um, like the relations between various biotopes, etc., are highly complex and are not even close to being fully understood. Sir, so what we have is science, of course, since these people are seeking the truth, but it is still very speculative. That even scientists cannot know today uh, what the future will bring in with regards to the environment. No, thank you. Now, why is it that important that democracy must always drop science? Well, first of all, we have nothing against scientists in and of themselves, and that's the reason why most politicians have scientists that tell them about the issues um, with different projects. Of course, politicians inform themselves um, about what's going on in science, and we have specialized politicians in most parliaments that tell their fellows um, what scientists provide them. So um, that is why we have a scientific component in democracy as well. What happens is that academia does not, uh, does not have an incentive to feed politicians. As special interest in academia, it's just publish or perish, not give your results to politicians. Well, I would say that most academians would be very happy to see their actual ideas enacted in policies. This is a, a very strong motive, I would think. Now, why is it important that we give politics the priority here compared to science? Because scientists do not have an overview over the whole picture. Government said that they want specialists. We tell you, specialists are good at their field, but at nothing else. And when it comes to policies that may affect the environment, then we have to weigh very complex interests. Often we have economical interests, we have the interests of people living in an area, uh, we have um, the interests of companies, legitimate interests of companies, because we're not against companies, per se. So we have all these interests, and what can a scientist do to evaluate all that? Scientists are not made to evaluate things that are outside of their specific field of science. Sorry. On the other hand, we have politicians that are there for exactly this reason. The whole process of democracy, the process of democratic debate, is made and is geared towards having different opinions on something, having different interests, and balancing them so that the best possible outcome for the majority of the voters is achieved in the end. And that is why science may not trump democratics in this case. Science <coughs> does not have the necessary information, as funny as it sounds, only politics have them. And, as I already said, of course politics will use science to gather uh, additional information. <coughs> Okay, if you agree that this issue is so complex and that even scientists sometimes don't have enough info, why are politicians the qualified candidates to decide this? <laughs> because politicians um, have the ability to decide in such situations because they do it all the time. Politicians are always concerned with issues that they don't fully understand. This is just um, the, um, the nature of politics, so to speak. Politicians always have um, decisions that are more complex than they can envision. And when science does not give us objective truth, but gives us something that may be true or may be not true, that maybe even is more true than other things, then it is still the responsibility of politicians to weigh these things against other interests. So, <laughs> to the last point, why is it that this court that they are proposing is not a court? Well, simply because a court enacts the law. The 
democratically made law. What these people are proposing to interact in act is some sort of objective truth um, that is not so objective as I've shown you. And as such, they are not controlled by the will of the voter. They are not controlled by society. Um, and therefore, we have a significant problem in democracy here. Now, what came up with proposition as well is that people would, be, uh, would trust more in this court if we say um, it's practically not true. Because we have control of politicians by the media by um, not NGOs, like communities, etc. We have very environmental, uh, environment where groups in society that consistently control the policies that are being made. So after all, we don't think we need this court and we think this court damages our society and our place of first rank. My thanks to the Leader of the Opposition and our call upon the Deputy Prime Minister to continue the case on behalf of Government Bench. Here, here.
um, this might lead to a more aggressive blocking process, and this actually might lead to the blocking of some uh, measures that could be considered just or uh, just neutral. But we say to you that even if this happens, this is actually better for us all because of all the harm that we humans have done to the environment in the last centuries. See, for instance, the consequences of industrialization and the problems with global warming and climate changes that we are facing right now. See how many uh, catastrophes we are facing on the, on the, on the last uh, years and how these increasing in, 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 in climate catastrophes are related with uh, the increase in, in, in the, the warming of the, of, of the planet. We say to you that, yeah, some uh, these might be, these specialists go, might at some point go over the line and then exaggerate in their program policies. But we say this is better for us all. This is better for the future of our conformity because you have been abusing for the of the conformity since uh, for centuries now. Yeah. So I am saying that we should essentially ignore all other interests, but that uh, those of the environment and make a of course not. Of course not. This is a discussion of fiscalization mechanism. That the last fiscalization mechanism uh, uh, after the legislative process. So first the parliament uh, makes a resolution or approves a resolution, and then it's going to be fiscalized by by, by this board of trustees, and they will say and they will have the capacity to veto it. It's not. Uh, it's the ultimate. Thing. They are not sensitive in any way. So, second, this is good for the economy. Why? Because if uh, because this this position creates more incent incentives on the private sector for for it needs to find alternatives for the current solutions they have. That they need to find alternatives for the current polluting solutions that uh, exist, and this might actually uh, lead to, to to the solution of our urgent need to find alternatives to current status quo in in what. In, in the terms of uh, energy sources and uh, abuse of coal, for industry, for instance, and that and that, that and the of coal are actually threatening uh, the human existence as we know it. And actually, this might lead to the expansion of the economy in the development of new industries. Take, for instance, the green, the green job plan in the USA, uh, which creates incentives. Uh, for the creation of new jobs in, uh, in the renewal, renewal industry sector. And it creates more incentives in the universities and the enterprises for the uh, creation of new courses and new research and development. And this actually is uh, extremely beneficial for us all because it might, it, it, it leads to the, to, the, to the search of solutions for the current uh, the solutions we have on the use and abuse of the natural, of natural uh, resources. Yeah, and also. Okay, uh, they might also say that this brings an impact on the next level of countries. Yeah, we do not deny that uh, in the end that uh, this might uh, that this might lead to, uh, to 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 have some impact on the less developed countries. But under the status quo, uh, because under the status quo, everyone. Then the, the, the current solutions are cheaper than the solutions. But actually, this is a collective <laughs> effort of all the world. This is this, this needs to be a, a collective effort of everyone in of every country in the world, of every each individual in the human surface uh, in the no, in Earth, uh, in order to achieve a better um, a better state for uh, humanity. Because see, for instance, the huge ecological footprint of China and India, and these countries need to be part of the global effort. Need to be part of this effort in order to bring a future to us all and a future for the better generations. Because we've shown you how uh, the, this is right in terms of independence, specialized knowledge, and they are ready to support for, for, for the future generations. Because this is actually good for the economy and doesn't have any impact to the future. My thanks to the Deputy Prime Minister. I now call upon the Deputy Leader of the Opposition to continue the case on behalf of the Opposition Bench. Here, here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, 
And before, before I come to my uh, own points, where I will show you that it's impossible to measure the interests of future generations and um, why um, uh, it can be even uh, why harmful decisions for, uh, the, for the environment um, can actually help future generations. Some points might rebuttal. Uh, we've heard that freedom policy is always uh, the better policy. Um, well, Janis has already shown you that we don't know the impact on uh, such policies that are uh, uh, that have environmental uh, consequences. Um, so it might be the case that uh, we have a situation uh, that we are uh, not rectifying or not going to do the policy. Um, uh, although it has no uh, future, no real impact on future generations. Um, so we should consider uh, the uh, actual policy uh, um, right now in this given case. No, thank you. Uh, you said that uh, it can uh, create incentives for, for private companies to find solutions. But let's have a look at such. Uh, decisions. Uh, these are actually decisions uh, done by um, the, the parliaments uh, right now. We don't need any. Um, uh, su uh, we don't need such uh, so-called Supreme Court. Uh, um, yes, we will never call it Supreme Court because the, the, this is uh, something quite different. Um, so for, for such policies, there is no need for such a motion. <laughs> Um, it only concerns uh, policy things. When uh, the country says, you know, we should uh, do something uh, on a more um, high level, on a national level. So there's, uh, it, it's not in the interest of uh, um, smaller companies to produce new cars or something like that. So there's an incentive to produce those sort of things. Uh, uh, no, okay, so when you tell a politician uh, a policy like fracking is going to make you energy independent, and it's going to give you a lot of money, however, it's going to harm the environment a lot, what do you think his response will be? Um, yeah, but this is a decision uh, the government has to do, and there's no incentive for the, 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 for, for the industry uh, to, to search for any other uh, solutions. Uh, with, um, uh, yeah, I will, will for, uh, move on to my own uh, points, which are, uh, I think, even more uh, why it is impossible to imagine the interest of future generations in such a solution um, has no sense. Um, if we have uh, such a court and we have to take into consideration uh, the, the, the expected welfare and disadvantages of future generations, how uh, should they be measured? Because almost everything we are right, uh, do, uh, doing right now has any influence on future generations. Take uh, uh, small, uh, take simple things into consideration. Uh, uh, think about uh, 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 using some oil in order to produce a plastic bag. Uh, this harms the next generation because they are no longer able to use that amount. And it's even worse for the uh, second and fourth generation because they uh, also are not able to use that oil. And it's the worst for the thousandth generation and so on and so forth. So if we are thinking about, about future generations, we have to think about uh, the amount of all generations from now on to the end of mankind. Um, and thus, the interest of these future generations uh, would be so high that it uh, overweights uh, um, uh, uh, our uh, interests. We are no longer able to do any decision. No, you have to have your channel later on in your own speech. Um, so, uh, it is impossible to, uh, to find any uh, decision right now. Um, because everything, really, and everything can be harmful for future generations. So we, uh, the, the only rational uh, solution is that we are trying to look uh, on the benefit of our generation, so that we are enabling to uh, that we are making the best for us. Uh, and now I will show you why this is rational, uh, why it is the best for future generations. Uh, that we are looking for the best for our generation. Um, for first, uh, for two uh, reasons. First, um, as I've told you before, the impact of policies influencing the environment 
is often highly speculated, and it might be the case that we are not implementing um, policy because of either some environmental issues for future generations, although they are not harmful. So we are harping with this emotion um, our generation, uh, ourselves, and thus uh, our economic welfare. And if you're harming our economic welfare, you're also harming um, the future generations. Because uh, the best of future generations best if we are offering them the, the best possible situation concerning, for example, technological progress and economy. Um, those generations are then better off because they have a better start all in all. And it might be, uh, and they are, you have, might even have the chance to reduce so-called harmful policy decisions on the environment, uh, which we are doing right now, even in a more easier, more uh, efficient way uh, than we are uh, um, able to do so. Uh, let's just have an example. Uh, for example, look at here in uh, uh, Germany to the deepening of the river Elbe in Hamburg, where we're discussing right with this right now. Um, we have the chance to strengthen our German economy by deepening this river. Uh, in order to help our uh, economy and thus the prosperity of our country um, so that we have the possibility to invest in new technology and education uh, even for further generations. And uh, we have to wait out now uh, whether the uh, impact on the, the, of, of such a policy is <coughs> the environment. And we as the uh, opposition say no uh, because we can't wait uh, the, um, the, 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 the partner for future generations, we should only consider uh, our, uh, our perspective, uh, the value of our generation, because it's best not even for us, but also for the future. So, close that motion. Thank you. My well, thanks to the Deputy Leader of the Opposition, and I'll call upon the Member of Government to continue the case on behalf of the Government Bench and open the back half of the debate. Thank you. Checks and balances that they do need it in a large amount. 
And on the other hand, we don't see why it couldn't be another one about someone who actually knows what is going on in the environment and what's the best possible option. And the second response to that is that in this, it will be counterbalancing each other. Politicians trying to make policies uh, and to actually do something good for the people, and experts saying what, what, are, what are the possible consequences of that. We don't see a problem. The last part of my model is about future generations. The first opposition has been talking a lot about future generations and saying that we actually have a lot of benefits from plastics and things like that because we're using that and having some benefits in like practical uh, lifetime. But and the end of that is even if it, they have some bad consequences, we believe in the future generations that they will uh, find a way to actually benefit from that or to uh, diminish those bad consequences. Well, we see that that was the, uh, the instance of the thinking that was wrong in the industrial uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the industrial part because basically we were always depending that some smart uh, scientists would figure out how to get uh, get us out of this mess. And we saw that that was detrimental for the environment, and this is why people are dying of cancer and living in terrible uh, conditions for uh, for their life. Now to my success. First of all, in this motion, we have a word that says may have. We believe that if, if politicians, and we can see this implemented in the European uh, Union policies about um, when something is predicted to be maybe harmful, that it should be stopped doing like with mental disease. Well, the European Union is, has a lot of technocrats, and this is what, what we recognize here. If they see that they may have uh, maybe some consequences, they should stop this. Why? Because we don't want to see earthquakes in Lancashire uh, area that happen with fracking. We don't want to see people maybe losing their lives or having some detrimental diseases. If this is something that could possibly create some harms, we want to stop before it actually creates them. And why is this legitimate? We in the status quo already see that we put our faith in experts, like with courts, where we don't actually pick and choose by democratic elections or judges, but because they are very scientifically experts of that area, we put our faith in them when something is so important as a judicial system. And also for like agencies for media and things like that. We do the same thing because we recognize that the media is very important and has a lot of power. Now, why do we believe that voters and politicians think short term before I continue the second? Yes, Madam, can you please explain me how the expert in ecology is going to know what kind of economical effects the new policy is going to have? Because he's an expert and he will know that, or he should consult someone if he thinks that his decision might be not good enough or something like that. But we, on the other hand, think that economics should not be our worry at this point because the environment is suffering because of the economics for, uh, for hundreds of years. Now, why do voters and politicians are, are thinking short term that we believe it's instrumentally wrong? First of all, voters, they are interested in ecology. They hear it's a dangerous thing that we might all die from it and things like that. But nobody is thinking about something that is not close enough to him. The only people who are complaining about the ecology are the people who actually cannot breathe because of the pollutants. The other thing is that they have fear from the ecology. Sometimes politicians can actually scare their people because they don't know much about ecology and sell them stories that are beneficial for them. We believe that's detrimentally wrong. And on the other hand, politicians gain their motivation by saying in elections like, we brought you jobs, uh, we brought you uh, workplaces, we brought you, and they are thinking about power independence. And this is something that is striving for them. Why? Because in the international community, dependence on power is something that gives you power in the international community. Russia can do a lot of things and never be questioned just because it has a lot of gas. But we believe that we should stop politicians from thinking in those terms because it's not beneficial for their citizens and not beneficial for the planet. And what is a lot, of, a, a lot important to know uh, as well, because now when politicians actually give some policies to this court or something like that, if the court uh, refuses them, it sends a message that the politician is not thinking right about their citizens. What does that mean? That means that the politician is not accountable enough for their citizens. And this is something that will motivate the politicians to think more about the environment. And on the other hand, we could get rid of politicians that do not put their citizens in the, in the uh, equation of the environment and of the job prices. For all these reasons, we 
My thanks to the member of government. I now call upon the member of the opposition to continue the case on behalf of opposition bench. You're here. It's an honor and a privilege to be here with our team from the University of Berkeley from the from the city. And it's an honor to have four teams from Berkeley and Serbia in the EFL semifinals. I just want to say that. <laughs> now, our substantive is going to basically be about geopolitics and economics and how this will harm third, uh, third world countries, developing countries, and how this harm is far, far worse for these countries and for their government and for their citizens than any benefits for the global environment for all the countries. But other countries today are the same here. Now, before that, a few points of the problem, and then we will have an interval to come in our substantive. One, experts versus government. People think that it's extremely hard for experts to have all these powers from one reason. Because when an expert says something, you cannot question it. He's an expert. Therefore, because of this, the experts will have this aura of being an expert or something, and even if they are wrong, you will not be able to question them because that, that, that is their final say. Now, why is government better? We have four reasons for that. Firstly, checks and balances. These people don't have checks and balances. They are chosen once, and they will stay. So they do not have to be elected. So there is this, this mutual checks and balances between government and this uh, supreme government. The Supreme Ecological Court, or the Green Supreme Court, simply doesn't stand because then these people will stay there for years. Second reason government has a mission to protect us, has a mission to take care of us, and has a mission to, to think about our, of, of, our, of our best interests. Experts not necessarily don't have to have that mission, they can pursue their own policies or their own theories, like they said. Thirdly, governments have a bigger picture, therefore, economical and political and geopolitical levels are something that only government can provide to the government has all the ministers and all the experts and all other from all the other areas which will prove to be beneficial. Fourth group, uh, which, is, which is also important, lobby, okay? Less groups can, 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 can uh, the minorities of people who are <coughs> can easily get their vote to the politician, can easily influence the politicians, much, much more easier than they can influence the expert, which is a great problem because sometimes, for example, in some rural areas, some, okay, but that's a, that's, a, that's a bad thing because some rural areas, or some poor areas, cannot possibly financially sustain some sort of ecological policy, right? Therefore, somewhere when you should but when you when you implement this policy, they can be harmful and these groups of people and these poor people can, cannot do anything against the policy, cannot lobby against it, cannot, cannot even vote against it, cannot do anything because they get vetoed. Now uh, that means less jobs I mean, that means cars, that means moral cars that they cannot say anything against. Second level, uh, hybrid car is a good example of what we want to do with the drivers. Uh, to produce a hybrid car, you have to produce a specific battery. To produce that specific battery, uh, that producing the specific battery is so harmful for the environment that it's better off for you to drive a, a car for 20 years, which means that you will less harm the environment than simply buying one hybrid car with that sort of battery. Now, this tells us two things. One, it tells us that ecological lobby and ecological PR isn't that bad as we think. And two, it tells us that ecological development hasn't risen so much to that extent that we can easily say, we're fine, we can just do more, we can, we can move on to other social <coughs> alternative energies, and we can be peaceful. Third point of rebuttal is basically that these other energies are much more expensive than this. In a time frequent crisis, not just because we don't have money, but because we need to allocate a, a ration of these things are much more expensive, these alternative energies, these green policies, are not something that should be our priority. And secondly, moreover, we don't believe that the demand that exists for the energy will be supplied by all these alternative energies. Uh, uh, therefore, therefore, we should have this policy, be the Supreme Court that will stifle our economic progress and uh, pursue things that are not, we are not yet ready for. Now, sir, why is this coming? Now, uh, the fourth thing is about the Constitutional Court, they say the Supreme Court, the legal Supreme Court, okay, versus the Green Supreme Court. We have significant differences here, which we would like to say. One, legal Supreme Court is about concrete issues that are very, very uh, uh, limited, that are very uh, 
coming to the specific to a specific sort, and they do not have implications of a global variety. Secondly, the legal Supreme Court is thinking about clear things, okay, about laws, about provisions, about certain norms. Therefore, we can say, okay, you, you, you lawyers, uh, judges can uh, 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 talk about it. Thirdly, which is also very important. Legal Supreme, the Supreme Court, because of its position, isn't that attractive for law. This will be much more attractive for law from the ecological perspective and from other, other, other uh, actors. Why? Because simply there's much more money in green energy and energy uh, and, uh, in general than there is basically financial interest uh, to lobby someone from the Supreme Court. Therefore, we believe that this shouldn't be equalized from the <coughs> Moreover, we believe that this is not a debate about medical, that's something that we can let technocrats decide. This is a debate about something that is a far more complex issue. And unfortunately, our movie isn't going to tell it for us to prove to us the correlation between all the hurricanes and the global warming. And then also, we believe that censor UN agencies that were, that were exploring this have divided scientists between them. We believe that this is an issue that we should debate some more about, and not only have this aura of experts. Be doing some policies which can be extremely harmful. Now, the hard to points. Sir, okay. your hybrid example actually proves our point where people can use some parts of ecological something, something and convey to people and actually make them believe that this is something no, that is useful. No, 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 it proves that ecological eco friendly cases have, have extremely good PR because people don't have any idea about hybrid cards and they think it's good. But actually, it's much more harmful because it means that actually uh, ecological, uh, ecological policies. Have PR, which is extremely good, and therefore <laughs> do not need help in that perspective. And I'm going to thank you to substantial developing countries, which we think it's extremely bad for four reasons to put this in developing countries. One, economic development in these countries is based on these energies that are uh, unfortunately coming from the environment. They have responsibility towards their taxpayers, towards, towards their citizens, and not responsibility towards the planet itself. Uh, therefore, they should, they should care about economic development in their own country. Now, that will lead to stability in their own country because that's also an issue in developing countries. They have economic instability in these countries, you are more likely to have political instability in these countries. Second of all, small countries need to be politically independent. That's very important in this case. Because if we, if some countries have some ecological, ecological detrimental policy, like for example, why, why don't we say the United States would like to develop in countries use fracking or some other means that are necessary to get more political independence because that will be better for them as a political subject and that will be stronger for them. We believe that Russia is an excellent example for our country because Russian citizens are much better off because their country is powerful in the global arena because of uh, uh, its uh, exploitation of gas. Thirdly, it is not fair to make them uh, develop in a much more expensive way than we, we, we would develop them like this. And also, fourthly, this is a comparative advantage of developing countries to have these rules law. And if, if they lose comparative advantage, they would also lose investments who came to these countries just because they see that they get a profit from these countries from these lose, uh, lose, uh, lose legs. For all these cars, we beg you not to propose this. Thank you. My thanks to the member of the opposition, and I'll call upon the government whip to close the case on behalf of the government bench here. here. <laughs> Be able to 
uh, you know, learn from a plethora of different opinions and then find the one that is most likely to be right considering the environment. And we believe that that is enough to say that even though that they might be wrong, we think that they are more likely, much more likely to be right than politicians. The second thing that they have said is that the experts doesn't think about anything else but the environment. We believe that this is a good thing, not a bad thing. We believe that the fact that he only thinks about environment means that he's not going to be influenced by like politicians on whether he brought jobs, whether he made the country energy and energetically independent and so on, because all of these things hinder uh, the, the ability to implement green policies and that is harming the environment. We don't see why the thing only being uh, connected by uh, environmental issues is a bad thing. And the third of all, they say that this is more, much more attractive for lobbying, but they, in the same speech they say that lobbying can influence politicians more than experts. We don't see how that is, uh, uh, we think that that is contradictory. And second of all, we believe that even if it is more attractive for lobbying, two reasons, two, two, two rebuttals. First of all, politicians are much more easily to be lobbied than the, uh, the experts. And the second of all, why are experts less likely to be lobbied and to be uh, dissuaded is because they have given their life for inquiry, and because they have went to colleges and they have devoted their entire time to making an earth a earth better place, that's, that's one thing. And second of all, is this is just one thing in their life, they're going to make this policy. However, if it gets a backlash in an academic, in academic environment, in an academic climate, he has, he's going to lose legitimacy and he's going to lose authority in the academic environment. We believe that this is very harmful for him, and therefore he's not going to be uh, persuaded only by the lobbyists. And this thing that, about, about hybrid cars, we don't believe that this is a logical PR, we believe that this is a car company's PR, and the second of all, we believe that this basically proves that if uh, there are not enough information, people are going to believe that anything is right. We believe that since we know that hybrid cars are making so much damage, and we know that because of the experts, we need to consult the experts, and not just say, look, everybody thinks something is illogical, but it really isn't. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to talk about, uh, in the first place, who should make these decisions, and the second of all, what is more important, environment or economy, because we believe that this is the growth of our Okay, first of all, who should make these decisions? What we have shown you on the side of the other government, the other side of the opposition, is that even though the government, is that even though uh, scientists are less likely to be wrong, we believe that uh, 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 even though scientists can be wrong, we believe that they are less likely to be wrong than politicians. Second of all, we believe that politicians are not only motivated by the environment, they are motivated by their election, they are motivated by whether they are going to uh, make uh, economical impacts on, uh, on the country, and that is going to be their primary agenda, their primary thing that, that, is, going to, uh, that is going to influence their decisions. So basically, since they are going to only think about these issues and not think about um, and, uh, the environment, we believe that this uh, the decision should be left to the experts. Why? Because we believe that even though sometimes we don't know the impact of the policies, a lot of times we do know the impact of the policies, like for example in fracking. In fracking we have 100% of scientists saying, look, we've seen the earthquakes and we are 100% sure that they are connected to fracking. We have seen what happens when BP uh, spills their oil in the Gulf. We have seen what these uh, issues and all of the harms that this can make. And therefore, we believe that this is very harmful. And second of all, the motion says that the policies that may have economic and environmental impacts, and we believe that that is a very important thing. If scientists say that it may have uh, environmental impacts, we believe that we should listen to that. And the further, the furthermore, this, this idea about developing countries and their economy, how they are harmful for the environment, uh, uh, their economies are based on the things that are harmful for the environment. We say we shouldn't just take that as a status quo, we should strive to change that, right? Because, first of all, if their environment and if their economy is based around harming the environment, it's not only them that are feeling the harms, it's the entire globe that is feeling the harms, ladies and gentlemen. We believe that this is the reason why we need to implement these policies. Because, as Maria said, people are only going to think about the things that are closest to them. And, and, and therefore, uh, are not going to think about the environment the same way that the expert is going to think about the environment. But the second reason that is very important here is that right now, politicians still have legitimacy to 
talk about these issues. Why do they have legitimacy? Because, as the opposition said, they can consult experts, right? And they say, look, we've consulted the experts, we have agreed that they are either wrong or not wrong, and we have made, their, made our decision. So basically, right now, the way that they implement policies is that uh, this uh, facade that they have listened to the scientists, and therefore, uh, in the eye of the people, they still have legitimacy to think about these issues. We are taking away the legitimacy from politicians to, to, to talk about the things that they have no idea about. And when, they, when the uh, environmental experts veto their decision, we believe that that is going to show to the voters that these people have no idea what they're talking about. Because right now, in the parliament, for example, of the, in the Congress of the United States, the people that are making decisions that are harming and influencing the entire population are people like the, uh, the conservative Republican that said that if a woman is raped, she has uh, the mechanism by herself to uh, you know, defend her body from the spur of the rapist. So basically, we see that these people have no idea about science. <laughs> Well as the debate proper here here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the forum. Now what we said from the side of the second opposition is that this is clearly immoral for the developing countries that this will also diminish the, the, the economies of the of developed countries and we think that uh, at this point of time we should never do such thing as allow experts to, to make these kind of reasons and these kind of decisions because they are not good enough experts because their knowledge is in our knowledge and they do not consider other areas. Now, we move to a few points of rebuttal. Now, firstly, we consider that at this point, and we consider the government little question from this point, that at this point of time, where we develop our Western liberal democracies, as we call them, on the, on the industry revolution and, and on the harming and emitting huge amounts of CEOs, we consider that at this point of time it's immoral to say to other developing countries, well, we did that, but now you shouldn't do that because it's, it's so much harmful to us to our society and therefore to stop their problem to make even bigger gap between developed and developing countries. We consider that the, the biggest harm that we make here. Now, the second point of rebuttal is actually about these experts and, and how who has the more influence on people. We consider that when, when we take a look at politicians' decisions, firstly, we have different parties which, which office different kind of interests. For example, we have Green Party uh, or Ecological Party almost in every single country which promotes ecological politics, green politics, and things like that. But the point is that at that point you have two different political opinions, two different programs, two different policies, and they conflict with each other. And at the end, people choose what they want for themselves. When you have one, one Supreme Court, we consider that that's supreme authority. Why is that so? Because when you uh, look politician and, and, and if you want to be informed voter, you take what they say uh, with with your own opinion. You do not consider that a complete truth. But when you have something said by an expert in ecology, you are not going to challenge that because you as a regular voter do not know anything about ecology. And if that Supreme Court made a veto on something, you are not going to go out and say, well, maybe they are not right, maybe they are different, different uh, Opinions, maybe I should explore that. You're going to believe that. Now, why is that harmful? It's harmful because in today's world, we do not have a clear stand from the from the experts, right? We still have ecological lobby, we have still 
all along we had different policies. So there is no clear or the complete truth as, as the first opposition said. There is no clear truth on, on such important issues that the uh, experts cannot agree on those points. So we consider that we do not get the, the right thing that we want from that Supreme Court. No, thank you, not now. Now, two major, major clashes in this debate. The first is politicians versus echo experts again, yeah? and the second is is it now the right time to do this? Now, uh, when we take a look about at politicians, the, the problem that we have with the Chinese government is that at the end, still politicians are choosing those experts. So if we have lobby interest in, in uh, uh, or lobby funding of politicians, we still see that at the end, at the end, the politicians are choosing those ones who are going to sit in the Supreme Court. So the, if, if they are influenced by the lobby, they are more inclined to choose echo scientists sitting at that Supreme Court. Okay. If they are influenced by oil lobby, they are more inclined to choose oil oil scientists that are pro oil, uh, uh, whatever expertise, uh, to sit there. So we see that still politicians are influencing those kind of decisions at the end. Now, the, the, the other problem that we see here is that both scientists are looking at this as one time opportunity for their career. Why? Because if you get to the Supreme Court, you are going to sit there, as they said, for the rest of your career because you are not influenced by changes. People cannot change you. Politicians do not have will to change you. So therefore, it's good for us for you to sit a long time in that office. We believe that that is not a good point. Uh, why? Because we want, as in democracy, we want the change of opinions, and we see that science as such has changed a lot in the last 20 or 10 years. Then, then uh, yes, last 10. So we see that in the next 10 or 15 years, we are going to see a lot of changes, so we need a constant influence of new opinions. Second. Sir, the Supreme Court of Justice is chosen by politicians. What do you say about their lobbying things and such? We put our faith of uh, being in our society and <coughs> in jail in their hands. Yes, it's, it's quite a bit, bit different point. Why? Because those at the Supreme City now at Supreme Court have different values in their career. The, the moral and the justice is the, is the thing that they practice for so many years. They had developed careers as being good judges and things like that in order to get to the Supreme Court. We do not see the same thing happening to these, uh, to these scientists. Why? Because they do not have moral at first place thought anywhere. Secondly, they do not, they have never been taught to make uh, justice decisions. But furthermore, what we want to to say what's the crucial difference before that, I'm going to go back to that. Before that, the, the research that we say and the first government agreed are mostly paid by the government. So we still see that at, at that point, the government can influence the researches at the universities and the, the end products of those researches. So we see that the researches are, are influenced by the government and the end. And the, the, if, if they are they're not financed by the government, they can be financed by the lobby. Still, they, they, uh, the, the end product of, of those kind of researches are, are uh, more likely to get twisted by those uh, lobbies. No, thank you. No, but the, the main difference between politicians and the, and the, uh, and the experts in ecology or whatever is that politicians are trained uh, people to make decisions, while the, the, those kind of experts are not trained to do so. So we consider that in order for you to get to the parliament, to get to the public office, to get to some important important part of, of governing body, you need to have a build up career. You need to have made a lot, a lot of decisions, first in your party, secondly in local public or whatever, makes you get to that position. So we see that they practice of making a good decisions, whether those experts can never do that. Now, is now the right time to that that's the major point of, of this debate. We see that, that uh, alternative energies are so much expensive that none of the most developed countries in the world cannot depend on alternative energies at this point. We do not want to stop research on alternative energies, but to say to give to those experts who are going to say we go to, to other oil, oil, oil or, or other extraction uh, of, of energy, we consider that it's, it's crucially wrong for the economy economy of those countries. We already explained why it's more than just to do that for developing countries, but we consider that even the most developed countries, as I said, you, you cannot uh, do that. Now, at the end, what have we brought you from the side of the opposition? We have explained you many countries on many levels. Like, first, the experts make narrow decisions, cannot look at a broader picture. Secondly, we can influence politicians, and they are experts in making decisions. And thirdly, the developing countries will going to suffer even more by these decisions, so because of all these reasons, I beg